of that, you know, the best portion of it that we can. We can do as much as possible. We can raise as much prize pool as we can. So don't sit around. If you've got a few minutes, if you're at your PC and you're just dawdling, you have a chance to click a few buttons for a few moments. It really does help. It doesn't take long. Uh, so check that out. Exclamation mark R OK if you want that link. You hit level 10, how much did I get? If you hit level 10, then overall you will have added $13 to the Wardy TV tournament price pool. So yeah, check it out. Like I said, guys, I really appreciate it. I know I'm pushing it a lot. I know I'm being very aggressive with the promotion of it. It just makes sense. You know, it's the same as me asking you all to subscribe every other week, you know, so that's why I mention it. So check that out. Let's jump into it, guys, as we have in the top right side. A red Terran player here from Team Liquid from Data C, or on Data C, this is Clem. Bottom left, our blue Protoss player is going to be classic. To get into game at number one of this series, pick this off, get this underway. Let's see what's going to happen. Next is coming down, getting this set to rumble. I'm just going to be seeing our Cybercore coming up. Our next is getting rolling. And away we go. Can you revo delete the game when you hit level 10? They won't revoke the prize pool contribution? Nope, no. Nope. As soon as you hit level 10 or level 5, it's already guaranteed. That's all you have to do. You can do whatever you want after that. You don't have to keep it installed or anything. You can uninstall it, never look at it again. If you don't like it, you don't like it. They just want you to try out the game. Like I said, I don't advise you necessarily going to level 10. Level 10 definitely takes a while. But level 5 is, um... Level 5 is super easy. Like, level 5 is really, like... If you use the speed-ups and stuff, it's, like, 5 minutes. If 5 five to 10 minutes, depending on how quickly you want to read things or how much you want to read things and stuff, so... It's, uh... Like I said, it's super quick. If you want to go to 10, you know, feel very free to go to 10, but... The main push is level 5 is on my side. You have a week to get there. Anyways, guys, uh, sorry, uh, like I say, back into this Clem Classic series. I don't mean to sell out during the games too much. I'm trying to stay away from that in these sick matches that we've got. As Clem going to do the typical Clem, Clem maneuver, and he's going to proxy a starport. He loves his proxy starport Hellion drop. He really does. It's such a go-to build for Clem. He absolutely loves doing this, and in a best of five, he's always going to bring it out at some point. He's just going to bring it out very early this time around. Here on Data C, try and get a quick advantage over Classic. And of course, winning this group means you get to advance in first place and get straight into the quarterfinals of the tournament. Those quarterfinals played tomorrow. Stalker gonna get the SEV, but of course, Clem's Starport will finish. Clem's will to Hellion drop is just so strong, there's no way anyone can scout and deny the SEV in time. You know, even if they know where it is, there's just like a magical barrier blocking them from getting there because. They just cut, like, Clem just wants to proxy Starport Hellion drop so much that he just refuses to be denied in any way, shape, or form. And, uh, yeah, like I say, the, at least the scout is there, and obviously that will help. The thing is, Clem's micro can be so good in these scenarios anyway, you can still end up in a lot of trouble. So, let's see, such as right now, the Hellions are going to find the probes of the ramp. He didn't quite hit the lineup. Obviously, he does still have the medevac, but it's not here just yet. It kind of came in from the other side. He's still going to get seven workers just by running into the natural. And oh my goodness, the stalkers have not gotten rid of the Hellions. Not enough of them, and so the Hellions are in for more. They're going to get themselves 11 kills in total, Clem. Okay, okay, Clem. One more shot for 13, cool. Okay, well, Clem just going to dismantle Classic's economy in game one. The worst case here from Classic as well is that he's playing Phoenix, so it's not like he has some kind of a blink timing to follow up with or anything. He'll have some mild Phoenix harassment, and that just isn't going to be enough. <clears throat> Man, it, it's actually insane how good Clem is with this. But Like, he didn't even use the medevac, you know? He lost the medevac because it flew into the natural. He didn't even use the medevac. I think he was bringing it in with the idea of maybe micro and the Hellions a bit more, but it, it wasn't really needed at all. It didn't change anything there. As we do get a lift on the Cyclone, so the Phoenix... Actually, do come in rather useful, and the Stalkers doing some good damage. Clem's army supply is obviously not the strongest right now. He got a bit over-aggressive coming down this ramp so soon, and obviously the Cyclone being lifted, of all things, really was his one big defensive unit, so this is the one moment where Classic actually has a very strong counterattack. 
And a good opportunity, there goes the Marauder. The few Phoenix lifts there were have been used amazingly. Everyone has found major value as Clem looking to surround the Stalkers. He does get a cuddle on them. And the Stalkers obviously will struggle to get away with no blink or anything. So, yeah, six SCVs go down. Classic gets damage done that will bring him back into this game. And Clem, just a little greedy. No bunker or defense is really ready. Obviously, the Cyclone. He just went a bit too far forward as well. If he was a bit further back, a bit close to where reinforcements might arrive. He probably would have been okay as well. As that bio army will just sit here on this natural. I'm just going to be seeing the wood of mine getting set up alongside everything else too. Our reactor taking a couple more final shots. Our marauders press forward. I'm just going to be seeing our phoenix coming in. Just going to lift up one of these marauders. Currently marauder continuing through. The stalkers get chased away. I'm just going to be seeing our rover bay is about to finish. As the Immortal and the Phoenix continue to produce on the side of Classic. Stim, Combat, plus one. This is going to be continuing through as well. A couple of SCVs will be going down. Bioforce will begin to press forward here. Again, Combat Shield and the plus one attack upgrade continuing through as our Phoenix... Uh, looking to maybe jump in toward the main base there. Clem has Stim, so it's not a good time to still be out on the map as the Stalkers. That's a wild lift, you know? I mean, there's enough Marines here to fight off Phoenix, so I don't necessarily feel like you're just safe or anything to start kind of lifting units. As Classic is going to come lift another. I feel like Clem could have turned around and gotten rid of that Phoenix immediately if he turned around in time, but... All right, well, Classic definitely getting a lot done and definitely keeping this game moving for himself. But it was obviously not really looking pretty for him at all previously. Here are the medivacs. They were delayed as the reactor went down. Clem still has a good timing here, right? He's still got upgrades finishing. Plus one is about to complete to make it the trifecta of stim combat. And plus one for this attack. He's spending a lot of time chasing these phoenix around, which are more or less out of energy. What is there at home for classic? He's got one colossus and a mortal. Four stalkers and a sentry. That's about it. And that's just going to be seen our bioforce. On the loop around this side, the phoenix have to pull away and... The one Colossus is going to be the real kind of deal breaker here. It might just be enough for Clem to have to back away from this. And yeah, Clem's early lead dismantled by the lack of a bunker. And yeah, nice for Classic. He's going to stay alive in this game. And he's even going to push Clem back quite aggressively there. Clem, five racks, by the way. So he doesn't want to lose too many units because he is two base all in. He wants to keep the momentum up with these attacks. He wants to keep on going and just go, go, go. So very important for him that he doesn't lose too much all at once. He doesn't get overcommitted into a couple of these fights because that is one of the worst case scenarios that can come around for you. So he's got to be very careful about which fights he picks. He starts a second star, but we're still only on two bases though, right? Wow. So he just wants to get up to like a very high Viking count and then he's just going to switch straight into like, you know, well, not switch, but really kind of try and blow this up with a big attack. Twilight and Forge only just finishing, so he's got some amount of time before we have those extra upgrades coming into play. The Widow Mine here connects on a hallucination. Classic setting that off and able to waste the Widow Mine shot as he gets the cleanup there easily. More well, Vikings about to finish up. Like I said, that starport's so We're even getting the Ghost Academy. Clem is going to try and afford everything here. I still think it's important that Clem goes before these upgrades kick in from Classic, right? If he gets the Twilight upgrades and 1-1, one, one, it's going to be that much harder for Clem to bust through him. Don't get me wrong, you know, having a Ghost 2 is amazing. But you've got to find the right balance of what's amazing for you versus what is the least convenient for your opponent. If Classic gets to finish all these upgrades, it's going to help, help his army out massively here. And as we do see another Colossus added in, Clem will be happy about that. The more Colossus, the more targets his Vikings will have. Yeah, three ghosts. Probably an SCV pull as well, right? We, we always used to see the SCVs pulled in that uh, situation. So yeah, I imagine an SCV pull as we go with this attack, because you are you are all in. You have to win this. The EMPs are a one-time thing. You get one round of EMPs. Bang, bang. Classic needs to not be in the middle of the map. Cl Classic, it's nice to be one your opponent off, but if you get surrounded at this point in time, you're in a ton of trouble. As Let's see if the SCVs get pulled. So far, they will not be pulled, as we do have our Phoenix getting chased around by the Vikings. Obviously, now, maybe Classic realizing just how large this army is. He is sitting back defensively. He's about to finish charge. He's about to finish 1-1. Has Clem's tech been worth allowing Classic to get to all of these upgrades? 
You know, it might well have been because with the Vikings, he's got an answer to the Colossi. With the Ghost, his EMPs can obviously do a lot. Let's see what kind of a fight we get here. First Widow Mine going off. We kind of need these Ghosts to turn around at some point. They need to find the EMPs. They're so far back. The Ghosts are struggling. The Marines run back, so the Marauders are tanking the damage. First EMP went off. We actually have one more EMP available. What are we going to drop it on? Clam Micro and brilliantly so far. Keeping the Marines so far away, so they're never taking the brunt of the damage here. The Vikings have free reign over the Colossi. There's only Zealots left on the ground, and Clem's going to have the bio to continue pushing forward, it would seem. Super Battery will, uh, well, keep the Colossus alive, but this base is in trouble, right? I mean, Classic just started a new Colossus. He's going to sta start a bunch of additional Stalkers. I feel like Stalkers are not what you need right now. No, I understand you want to keep the Colossus alive, but surely Stalkers are just not the call here as this Colossus will go down. And Clem, we can land the Vikings to ca tank. He probably doesn't realize there's a new Colossus on the way. It's kind of crazy that Classic built a Colossus during this. I'd be building a Disruptor, right? A little bit of a save me kind of Hail Mary move. Clem's going to get it done on the two base attack, guys. He's going to break down this location. Unless Classic can get a lot of reinforcements up very quickly here. This one really does seem like a done deal. This Nexus will fall. And Clem just doesn't want to waste too much time. This was a fourth base, so his opponent still has a third. Clem's moving his own main base to a third location, so that's going to be his part of the plan here. Need to push forward the Vikings on her Colossus. Battery doing some work once again. The batteries have been huge for Classic, but he's still down 40 army supply. Super Battery should be back in a moment, and Clem's going to give it a few more moments. He's going to let some healing go off on his units here as well, and let that come into place just slightly. Loop around a different direction of attack. Try and make sure these Vikings get the most. The Super Battery is here. I think Super Battery obviously needs to save this Colossus. That's almost a guarantee. Is like, Clem's being super cautious, no? I feel like I look at this army and I'm like, Clem, you've got so much. At least I feel like he's got so much in comparison. Now the Super Battery pops and there's a second Colossus. Archons are coming back. Clem lost his ghost, so he doesn't have any EMPs to instantly nuke down Archons. And Classic is building a, a fourth base again. Two, two upgrades. I feel like they're both playing this in a while. While Clem is playing so passively that Classic's convinced he can get upgrades, but I mean, Clem's expanding too. Is Clem in a position he can just expand? What? I, I, I mean, it, yeah, kind of a crazy call, I feel like. On both sides, I feel like they're both making crazy calls. I, I, I mean, I, I can understand Classics because I feel like it's based on what Clem is doing. He's seen that Clem isn't just overcommitting into him, so he's like, cool, I can get into some more upgrades and stuff. Dropping the main base is going to be nice. I, mean, I think Clem obviously has just been a tough situation for him to read. If he saw what we saw, I think he would have been up that ramp and into that army and ending this game. He's probably just being very wary of the potential of just a ton of zealots warping in and just overwhelming his force, and then he's in a lot of trouble, right? So, just being careful of that is... Do you have the main army of Clem pulling back? Because he's killed some probes, he's got some zealots harassing his mineral lines. And he's obviously going up to his... I'm gonna call it the fourth base, it's obviously kind of actually his third base, because obviously the third is actually his main relocated, but... It obviously gets complicated, but yeah, kind of going into the four base setup, and... I mean, the main thing you're missing on the four base setup in this regard is a little bit of mineral mining in the main, and obviously the two gases in the main base would usually last a lot longer. I guess at some point if this game goes long enough, you can just build a macro CC in the main base and then get the gases mining once again. And Clem's been on 47 workers, though, pretty much this entire time, and that's the thing, like... He was never on a good economy to just, to, in my eyes, just slow this down and back it up. And now Classic has 2-2 against the 1-1, one, one, so his upgrades are in the lead. And that's going to be a massive part of this as well. Fire Force coming across, Colossi and Archons making their way up to the top. Unload in the corner here, just kind of trying to drop classic zombies on the other side. We're going to go into a base trade. I don't think a base trade is necessarily ideal. Clem's going to come back home. He's going to realize a base trade is not good for him, especially as he'd be starting slow. But can classic just recall out of this, or is it too late? Clem does have a massive surround on this army. Is that going to be enough for him? First, the MPs are coming down. Vikings trying to get rid of these colossi. He will get rid of one, two, and three. Can the Bio Army deal with the rest of this with 1-1 one, one against 2-2? Two, two? I do not think so. Classic takes game one. And Clem 
try to play a long game in a position where you should have played a, a quick aggressive game. Up right hand side, down a game, our blue Terran player from Team Liquid is Clem. I don't forget he started off so well also with the Hellion drop, and then a bunker really undid that lead for him as well. Really an entire game of just lost advantages from Clem. As in the bottom left, our red Poros player. What a group it would be for him to come out first in. Take down Raynor and Clem, that's a combo. It is classic in the bottom left, leading 1-0 in this winner's match of Group D. <clears throat> anyway, probe coming up. As we get this set to go. Well, it's going to be interesting because obviously Clem's used up one of his more aggressive builds here already, so that's got to be uh, kind of a question mark to begin with. Next is coming through. And this set and ready. I'm just going to be seeing our factory coming up as well as we get this established. And just going to be seeing our simulator coming in for the moment. So just getting this all set up. Creeper heading down to the bottom side of the map. As we get this underway. The Dab gonna shade out to the upper right hand side. It's just gonna make their way up to the top. Couple of Reapers here together will be coming through. Factor coming up, Hellion on the way out, Reaper coming through. Again, everything getting set here is this one adept is not going to commit. That's the safe play, of course, because if you commit into that position, you would have been in a little bit of trouble almost immediately. So good to move away from there before it becomes troubling. And let's see how we go now. As two Reapers, both low. Good grenade is going to make sure they don't take an extra shot, but the Adepts are shading after them. One more grenade is not enough. Both Reapers go down, and two Adepts here I'm going to start laying waste to the Hellion Reaper defense. The Hellion going to go down. This takes away a lot of the aggression possibility across the map. As, yeah, these Adepts likely to go down. As, oh, that Adept could have had that Reaper kill as well. That was a slip up from Classic. A little bit of a hectic fight. And in the end, this Reaper Hellion does it back away. Two more gates going down. Getting set up for the moment. Gonna be seeing our Reaper ready to jump up in toward the main base here. Hang on, couple gates, Robo Facility, Blink, all producing in this one. Adept wants to go after that Reaper, is gonna jump onto it. Reaper starts taking a little bit of a connection. Gonna be seeing the Reaper escaping away back out up the left side. The Hellion gets here, and a couple of probes will begin to take damage, as we will get rid of one. So the Hellion getting something done is definitely not the, the brightest of starts from Clem. 29 workers to the 37. This Reaper gonna run around as best as possible. The Adept trying to get on top of it. The Reaper will go down. With the Reaper down, Clem is gonna be, uh, again, with a little bit less harass than he would like. Extra clue racks continuing in. The Siege Tank is about to finish, and a couple of Marines continuing up. The Raven continues in as well. So all of this still just coming in. As the tank comes through, the Raven sets up. Just going to be seeing our Cyclone and Viking play. Continue to get established for the moment. So again, bringing all of this up right now is our SCV set up on the natural. A tank getting established. And just in general scene, I mean, this factory now going to move down to the south as well. So this rack's going to land on the tech lab also here. 
and get Stim started too. We got the Raven out to harass, but we actually are going to see him flying past this Adept. So the Adept should at least get a little bit of prior warning so you know where the Raven's going to be coming in from. Meanwhile, the Stalkers do blink into the main and they get a Viking, but we lost a Stalker to the tank shot. I'm just going to try and chase away. We do have the blink out whenever necessary. And again, Classic's harassment so far has been pretty stellar in this series. Keeping Clam at a difficult point, that's for sure. Raven around the bottom. I'm just going to be seeing the auto turret. Nabbing a couple of these probes, so doing pretty well. But, uh, yeah. Only a couple was otherwise defended, and still got to kind of question that a little bit too as that Colossus is about to pop out. Extended Thermal Lance is coming into play. Our Forge is on the way up as well now from Classic, so getting that ready to start. Army gathering in the center. Bioforce gathering up. Couple of Widow Mines coming through. It's going to be seen again. Stimpak, Combat Shield, all of that finishing in the main base. Ready to rally down to the low ground. Just for the moment. Our Armory is going to be finishing up shortly as well. Again, plus one attack. Combat Shield. All of this continuing into play for the moment here as our Medivac has a couple of Widow Mines inside. So Clem. Would love to find just a little bit of additional damage here that he's not really been getting just yet. It's been kind of slowed down for a little while so far. Unable to really strike sufficiently for the moment. See if this mind drop can do something. Clem. I'm just gonna grab myself the oh, little observer. Stalker's already waiting for this army to come across so you can start to kite it a little bit, get some shots off, get some damage done. Here we go. The Medivac's already taking some hits and five probes go down, so the widow mine strike is good. We also have the widow mine over here coming in. These widow mines coming in, it's just action everywhere, and Classic has to split in multiple places. While Clem's pushing with the main army, this main base is destroyed. Okay, that wasn't as good as I thought. There's only six more pros, but it felt like it could have been so much more than that, obviously. That felt like it could have been uh, a little bit crazier, perhaps. Could have gone a little wild. Twelve probes killed is still very good, don't get me wrong. But Clem couldn't find a way in with the main force. I'm just going to be seeing him get into the prism and a couple of additional gateways. So we'll get rid of this Widow Mine in the main mineral line as well. It's just going to knock that one down. Still got one Widow Mine here to deal with, and like I say, just... Amazing that this mind dropper is obviously still creating issues, and now Clem um, gets a bit of a position, gonna kill a cyber core. The pylon is already supply blocking classic, and these are just a couple of issues that are gonna continue to pile up for him, unfortunately. Keep him in a bit of a weird place. Uh, Medivac boosting through over to the natural, gonna get a couple of widow mines dropped off, and they are gonna blow up a few of these probes. Three workers, five workers going down immediately. Another widow mine coming around the back. Just gonna hit the probe one more time. It's gonna be another probe getting picked off there. And as a couple of marauders will continue to chew through the pylon on the left hand side, so knocking that down immediately as well. I'm just gonna be having again the damage dealt so far looking pretty darn reasonable. Stalks coming across. Medivacs load up the bio. I'm just going to see the Medivacs escaping up that left side. So again, backing away from there for the moment. A lot of extra zealots continuing through. Temple Archives is about to finish. Plus two attack and plus one armor continuing to produce. And just going to be seeing the couple of extra ghosts and Vikings on the way out. Clem getting to all of the tech that he needs. Classic is pushing forward. Horrible timing for Classic to do any sort of fighting. Because he's, he's down on the upgrades. His upgrades aren't here yet. He's flying into a defensive position. I mean, the argument might be 
something along the lines of Clem didn't have a lot of his tech ready yet, and honestly, yeah. Clem's going to win this fight. What's, what's going to be really a great sign that this was a horrible idea to fight, not just the fact that Clem wins the fight, Clem won this fight while killing five hallucinated Archons that he just never scanned and never found out were hallucinations. That is going to do that, and that's going to be Clem tying this series up. One not completely convinced about here. We wrapped up that game number two. It is going to be classic. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously he uh, got back into that first game, but the second one, not quite so pretty. Not quite ideal. Let's see what happens as we... Yep, this started off in the bottom right side is classic and in the top left hand side from team liquid our red terran player is clem game number three again loser of this has to play reno in a decider match if you ask me i would not like to be that man that doesn't sound like uh, an easy one uh, in the slightest Refinery's coming up, cracks coming through. Get this set and going early. I was gonna see our gateway coming up on the side. Oh, Cybernex go coming up on the side. Barracks is finishing. A little bit of a proxy from Clem, not really proxy, but like the fake proxy. He's going to build the factory out here too, though, so if Classic ever scouted, the mind game would be brilliant. Um, if Classic never scouts, then the mind game doesn't really mean much of anything, though, right? So, yeah, Cl Classic not scouting in this little hideaway is not going to do anything for Clem. As, uh, yeah, he obviously wants his opponent to overreact a bit, but at the moment, it does not, not seem to be happening in the slightest. So, yeah, definitely not ideal just yet. Hey, Academy SC2, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Does Clem even build a reactor out here, guys? I'm gonna stop building Hellion, stop what is at home, by the way, so... Yeah, this really is just a, a little bit of a crazy little way to start. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just funny because Classic never scouted. He's like never left his base. He has no idea what's happening. Two Hellions will go across the map. The two Widow Mines will be what's set up to drop in the Medivac. And um, yeah, I mean, you've just got it. The weird thing is you've just got a weird reactor for the rest of this game now where, you no, know, react is kind of a nice structure to have. It, it takes a while to build. It's 50 gas. It's kind of an annoyance to kind of build a reactor. And now the reactor is, is nigh on unusable for a lot of things as these Hellions come in. Three workers killed initially. Let's see if we can find a fourth. Uh, so I think he'll be good for number four here. Yeah, he's going to find four. So good little run by with the first two Hellions already getting some amount of damage done then is going to help a lot. I should be pretty happy about that at the very, very least. Double Widow Mine is getting built. Armory is on the way up. And we do see the medevac producing too, as the armory obviously wants to mean that these widow mines can stay hidden. This mine's going to go running. It's dragging stalkers out of the way, which means that the drop into the main might be less defended. The phoenix is not going to be here, and he will definitely not be able to lift up all of these mines. There's going to be one left in the medevac. Trying to be a little bit of a surprising factor, as Classic will set off both the mines initially. He does lift this one, though, and the probes apparently don't want to go back to the main base just yet. As we need detection, to be fair, Robo Facility's not done yet. Oh, Clem actually saves this Widow Mine. Brings it into the main, just going to drop it in the corner. And yeah, I mean, at least distracting Classic. And hey, Classic didn't start his Observer immediately because he was busy dealing with this. His first Mine Shot's about to come back on cooldown. Five, no, four. This one, if it hits in the center, Clem could have retargeted that to hit more. But oh, he's dropped in the natural as well. 13 probes go down. 
And Clem is doing ridiculous damage here early on in game number three. 13 dead probes is obviously a bit of a massacre. And Clem is... Honestly, Clem is playing a very solid series. Like, you, you know, like, Clem is putting himself into a fantastic position, I feel like, all game long. And all series long, he just made one kind of bad decision in that first game. He could have very easily been three content possible. In the top right side, our red Protoss player from... Well, no team right now, right? It is classic. And he is down one to two. And... Obviously, if he loses this, he plays Raynor in a rematch in the Deciders. Bottom left, our Blue Terran player from Team Liquid. This is Clem. To get this underway. Again, appreciate you all being here. Thanks for watching. This is a Wardy TV tournament. If you guys are enjoying this event and want to support further events, uh, you can check out our Patreon page. 100% of pledges on patreon.com forward slash Wardy TV go directly into StarCraft 2 tournaments. So... That's a fantastic way to help fund the prize pools of these events. Obviously, every time you guys subscribe, we put $1 plus into a tournament prize pool. And obviously, you can check out our stream sponsors and stuff as well. Another fantastic way to support. And we typically put those stream sponsorship monies into tournament prize pools as well. So lots of ways to support the events if you're enjoying this one. Like I say, do check out those options for allowing more of these to happen in the future. Engineering Bay. We'll just drop down onto the natural and a cyber core coming up, reactor coming through. Engineering Bay cancels the moment he sees the Nexus, and Clem will just command send it back at home as well. As the SCV escapes back down the bottom left. Nexus coming up, reactor building from Clem. It's going to be a senior CC coming online. The depot getting going. A couple of marines on the way out from Clem as well. So just getting all of this on the way. All of this nicely set for the moment here. Let's see how this game number four is going to go. Like I say, Clem has been pretty darn good so far. Now, this is a, a pretty good Protoss map. It's nicely set up. It's nicely, you know, designed Protoss to kind of defend on and everything. So that should be a pretty big aid nothing else Stargate builds in the main base I'm just gonna get that as the choice from classic I mean he's tried to go Phoenix a couple times not that he's really gotten very far along with them before it's all been shut down stopped and halted Actually gonna swap over to the reactor, just gonna get that one set up. And we will have the Rex. Scan landed here as well, it's so just getting that underway. Two Hellions once again from Clem. He might just do more of the same without the mind games that never really meant anything in that last game. Just gonna set up for that at the moment here. Phoenix pops out, gonna head down the bottom left side. And will continue to build up into Phoenix as his early tech choice. Two Widow Mines, two SCVs, all being brought out here as well. Medivac continues in production. And it's just going to be seen a few stalkers across the map with the Phoenix for high ground vision. Try and cause some chaos here. Because this is triple stalker, this is actually kind of awkward. These Hellions don't really help at all against this. The Widow Mines can help if they can get Burrow. They can pretty much stop this attack. The Phoenix lift goes on a Hellion. We could uh, soak one of these Widow Mine shots with a Phoenix. It wouldn't die if it's full HP. So that might be the way to actually be able to continue doing stuff here as Classic. And it's just going to be seeing the Phoenix coming through. A couple of Marines getting picked off. But I'm just going to try and play around those Widow Mines. Yeah, the fact it's a triple Stalker opening kind of means that a bunker almost feels necessary here. And especially Hellions just do not help where they would help quite a lot if you're playing, you know, versus Depths or so instead. more SCV kills. And there's our Cyclone coming by, locking onto that Phoenix for as long as possible, pushing it away to the sides. It's going to be seeing a couple more Phoenix backing it up as well. It's just going to fall back for the moment. 
The last talkers of classic retreat away to the upper right hand corner, so away they go. I'm gonna unburrow, back it up a little bit here, and just gonna be seeing our Viking, our Marines, ready to fight the Phoenix a little bit, so continue to do just that for the moment. And a couple of gates, Immortal, Robo Bay, all on the way up from Classic, and all of that set in game number four. You can get to the Robo Bay, get to some Colossus, see a bit of a macro game here. That would be quite nice. We've not really been able to see much of that just yet. Phoenix going to move in, an SCV, make it a couple, already starting to go down. So two SCVs picked off here. We've got the Cyclone coming in, a Viking shot or two on some Phoenix. So we do have probes going down across the map as well. That Phoenix and Ellie do dropping down dead. This is a Reaper came across the map, got some kills. Five probes went down, I mean. And I guess the, the remain the remnants of the Hellions came across the map there and delivered a little bit. We only lost one Phoenix in the end. It was uh, almost inevitable with them kind of flying all over the place. And there's so much anti-Phoenix here. Marine, Cyclone, Viking. It's all very good against those air units, naturally. Plus one attack. Still coming up on the Engineering Bay. Council building up, excellent thermal lens, Colossus. All this continuing through for the moment as our rope bay continues to just produce right now. And Clem going to start coming across the bridge as he makes his way to the upper right side. Again, the few Phoenix off over to the left. I'm just going to be seeing them. A little grab a wooden mine there. Captain Marine's going to get lifted as well. He's going to see the SCV also picked off. Wooden mine connects onto the Phoenix. We'll see the Phoenix is trying to be as annoying as possible and give Classic a chance to get to a good Colossus camp before Clem safely makes his way across the map and potentially can get set up in a nice strong position to make something happen in, so... Just working on that right now. Do you have our Phoenix back down to the south? They're going to come for a few of these SCVs. Going to pick off one immediately, make it two, and look for three, four. Oh, just going to find three for the moment. So three workers down already. Phoenix back through the south side. And again, a few extra gates on the way, plus one attack, then thermal lance, charge, all producing for the moment, Templar archives as well. And Clam will push. But probably too late to really do anything. Two Colossi out, a third is potentially on the way for all he knows, so it would be very dangerous. Very kind of ill-advised to kind of go attacking in right now based on what he knows. Phoenix will do more damage. Clam's just going to start pulling back. The thing is, he's like... It's nice to come back and push them back, but obviously then you never really get anywhere. I guess, like I say, he's not really going to attack on the other side, so he just wants to try and zone these Phoenix as best he can. But why then start moving onto the map and giving the Phoenix the chance to do damage in the first place if you're just going to immediately pull back and scramble to try and defend? Moving around, I'm just going to be seeing a few of the Phoenix still in the center, trying to see what they can do. It's going to be joining up, a Zealot Stalker, Colossus. Going back around the center, a couple of Archons coming online, just going to be seeing our Prism loading up, and just going to take a few Zealots over to the right. This army from Classic. Moving into the middle of the map here at the moment. Just going to be seeing our prism heading all the way down the south. Here comes the prism. That's what Clem, I mean, Clem now has to deal with this while also dealing with the push at the front, so, yeah. Clem has not been able to really do anything. Classic kind of controlling the pacing of this game, and he's going to at least kill off this uh, prison very quickly. I don't have a ton of zealots here, right? This is somewhat manageable, and Classic has not been able to make his way up the ramp yet. 
Clem's gonna go hunting, see if he can catch the Colossus on the back end. He gets hit by horrible force fields for himself. And Classic finds himself a really good startup to this fight. The Vikings kind of backwards though and getting rid of a lot of the Phoenix. Too many Phoenix go down, then obviously the Colossi are very exposed to those Vikings as well, and that's typically something else you're gonna have to be very careful of and steering as clear from as you know, staying as far away from as possible, basically. This classic will be hurting quite a bit at the moment. As it pulled all the way back home, Clem gets to go into more of his production. A couple of ghosts, the 2 2 upgrades. All of that being added on into play for now. All of these zealots over on the left hand side getting set up for just a second or so. A few of them down on the south. A lot of them in the upper left just going to go straight in after a missile turret. And a couple of zealots going to go for some of these SCVs just seeing what sort of damage they can find at the moment. Bio down to the bottom. Our Vikings continuing through. And yeah, the rest of this bio just coming around. The Zelds will continue to take quite a few shots so far. Stalkers and Archons move up since Tau goes down. Our Orbital Command is just going to get lifted off, and these SCVs are going to get disrupted. Oh god, so is the army. Clem obviously caught out of position here, losing a lot of workers. And uh, not really able to pounce on the army too much. I mean, now he's chasing. He's going to get a Colossus. No, he didn't. He split his damage onto a Phoenix. I thought he was guaranteed a Colossus kill there. Well, can Clem do something going across the map? His army's powerful. I mean, Clem's set up to potentially win a fight. He's going to need to win big if he wants to do well here. Drops an EMP on the Ghost that's likely to go down. Disruptor shots are just getting really close before they... The disruptor's getting really close before they fire their shots is the big issue, I think, at the moment. Oh, Clem's going to kill the Colossi now. He can shoot across this ledge, and there's not really a way to stop that. I guess my question becomes, are these Vikings actually just too high in number? Do we have disruptor shots? Still, we should. With this amount of disruptors, you can pretty much continuously fire. So Clem has to continuously dart backwards, and that makes this difficult. But a lot of classic zombie is very low. You know, it's very fragile, I guess. It's not low. I don't know what I was trying to say with that. But very fragile, that is not a good time to lag. Was that just me, or I have no idea, but whatever it was, we've resumed, and, well, yeah, Classic Zombie dies very quickly if Clem can just attack. That's why the Disruptors are so necessary. You need to be able to consistently hit with these Disruptors and keep Clem from just A-clicking forward, because if he just gets to fire all of the time, Classic Zombie just disappears. And I was almost convinced we were about to come out of that lag spike, and Clem's army was going to be gone, and we would have had some sort of regame situation. I think this is right now probably headed to the fifth map, looking at the supplies. Classic is... I mean, the thing is, from Clem, he's got so many Vikings that are currently useless, but as he loses them, there are carriers on the way, so they might have actually had some amount of use. There's a sort of shot here, fires. Clem saving his units. Can he somehow micro his way out of this position? With this somewhat surround he's got going on, this disruptor shot will land. No disruptor to the northern side. Clem splits, didn't find the chance to target that disruptor down. Now he does target it. He's going to get the next one as well. He comes forward. Every disruptor on the front lines is going down, but will it be enough? A disruptor from the high ground connects on everything that Clem had. I think this is going to game five of the series, guys. I think we are going the distance in this winner's match. And that's just going to be seeing our carriers still producing our disruptor still coming through. All of our carriers joining up and a couple of zealots going in after the marauders as well. And classic. I mean, this is the first game where I really feel like uh, Clem has looked a little bit lost in this series. Like I said to me, Clem has been in absolute control of this series and all of the previous games. Obviously now that's slipping away just a little bit as a few widow mines go off, a couple of probes go down. The zealot stalker immortal disruptor comes to the bottom corner to try and see what we can do here. And more carriers just continuing to produce, and this army of classic pulls back up the right side. Game settles down, but obviously Clem's behind in workers, so, uh, you know, time doesn't really benefit Clem at all, right? Time doesn't really do much for him, as DTs are harassing as well, and so far Clem is staying ahead of that, he's staying on top of it, but... That's also just an issue we'll probably have persisting throughout this game. And of 
Carrier's coming online. Classic's army's going to be insane. And Clem is currently losing his main base. The, the obviously main force here looks absolutely terrifying. But my shot goes off for a couple of interceptors. And we do have these zealots trying to escape away. Another widow mine shot connecting through. RTT swiping down whatever it can at the moment. Making as many plays as possible as 26 SCVs have died in Clem. I think it's about a die to this army that's coming across the map. As he doesn't really have much tech left either, right? A handful of ghosts? Pretty much no answer to the uh, carriers at the moment. It's going to be one of the big issues, obviously, as this is sort of shot turned around because it was about to hit so many of the zealots. Carriers actually kill off the command center before going on the army, but she's called, and that is going to do it. We are going to go to game. All right, so in the bottom right side, our blue Terran player. Again, you could argue it maybe should have been 3-0 for him if that first game finally went his way after he had multiple huge leads in it. And then, like I say, I mean, I mean he really flew, you know, messed up in that first game after a massive lead, but he really brought it back games 2 and 3. He looked convincing. Game 4, the first time he looked a little bit lost, perhaps. It's Clem in the bottom right, and Classic now getting to 2-2. Two and two. Here we go to game number 5. The full distance has been met in this series. Game 5, and we'll see what happens here. Final map of this series. Winner into the quarterfinals. Loser into the decider match against Raynor. It should be fun, but obviously not a not a great place to be, let's be realistic. Racks building for the moment. Creeper opening. This is Moon Dance. Shorter rush distance across the map. Something we could consider as Clem is playing that double gas. So, again, looking for that aggressive opening. Looking to get damage done early. We know that's how Clem likes to play. And that's exactly what he's going to aim for here in game number five to start things off. So getting that ready to begin. Clem, I'm bringing this Reaper out across to the upper left, going into the natural. I'm gonna see the Nexus. I'm just gonna have the Reaper continuing around over there so getting set up stalker does come down and a little look to see what's uh going on second and third racks coming down here from Clem just gonna be seeing our Stargate building on the side of classic obviously the second and third racks very quick so Clem a very aggressive setup here like I say moon dance no ramp on the natural short rush distance Works well for these fast bio openings. Hey, Jack Burton, PCE, thank you so much for the two month resub on the Prime. And Zergiel gonna gift a chunk of subs into the chat as well. Thank you very much, Zergiel. How you doing? Welcome, Elmer Yo. Music Junkie 66, Prize, Gotti Gaming, Sly Talent, and Rafters Sora on the Giftos. Thank you so much for the generosity, guys. Really appreciate it. If you're a gifted sub and you would like to go on the tree, please just remind me between the games and I will get you on the tree between games. Just at me in the chat. Uh, otherwise, I don't add the gifted subs because obviously otherwise it can get a little crazy. Change we had to make a little while back. Phoenix, a couple stalkers grabbing a first kill here. Our Marine Count continue to build up Siege Tank on the way, so we will have that tank to back up and attack, but also hold defensively a little bit too. And yo, know, also Alpha Star sucks coming in with the 23 month resub on the Prime as well. Also, thank you so much. Hope you're doing well. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for using your Prime on the channel. 
Well, Tank, like I say, positioned defensively here and will be important for Clem to, you know, make sure he doesn't have stalker issues. He's on his way to this bio, though, and again, that's going to hit hard, and I'm a little bit worried for Classic. Because I do feel like Classic is in this situation right now where... Yeah, I feel like right now we're in, we're in this little bit of a position where Classic is not immediately prepared for the, the massive bio with Stim and Combat Shields just being up and ready to go, especially with a couple of tanks supporting. Even if the Phoenix get a lift or so on the tanks, and mm, the Phoenix might be able to intercept or pick up one of the tanks. There's the Immortal build, and that's what I was kind of really looking for here from Classic, the Immortal just to provide a little bit of extra buffer on the ground for us. This tank gets lifted, guys. I mean... Phoenix will take a couple lifts to kill it here, but these Marines already moving forward. No Stim yet, but he gets two Stalkers. Uh-oh, there might be nothing left by the time the Immortal pops out. The tank should just be able to siege right here. We start straight onto the Super Battery. There's the Stim available for Clem. Super Battery goes down. Classics units are in a ton of trouble. Here's the Phoenix to lift up the Siege Tank, but they won't do much damage to it. There's the Immortal popping out. It won't last very long. The Colossus is a very hopeful attempt to build right here. As our bio has cleaned up the entire natural mineral line, and Clem is looking wonderful here for game number five. Looking as though he's going to win this out. And it's going to be the Raynor Classic rematch on the decider. GG is Clem. is going to get the 3-2 victory.